Hi, this is our group presentation on skin-to-skin -skin contact and its effects on breastfeeding of the newborn. And this is our group, Kiara, V, Jennifer, and Gwyneth. Okay, jumping right into the overview and rationale. We as a group were interested in the peacock question. In newborn babies, what is the effect of skin-to-skin -skin contact compared with no skin-to-skin -skin contact on breastfeeding for the first four weeks of life? This topic is quite relevant today because according to Centers for Disease Control, um, most recent breastfeeding report card, 84.1% of infants born in 2017 started breastfeeding, but only 58.3% of infants were still breastfeeding at six months. Despite the fact that the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends breastfeeding exclusively for six months. In addition, they found that infants that required supplementation before two days of age increased from 16.9% in 2016 to 19.2% in 2017. So we're interested in what interventions could we encourage at the hospital bedside level to promote breastfeeding and skin to skin contact is an intervention that is widely known for its benefit of increased maternal child bonding and perhaps skin to skin contact can help with breastfeeding as well. So practice issues and controversy is that uh, medically necessary formula supplementation is seen a lot in the hospitals. Um, it can be seen as an issue because the baby isn't receiving enough nutrition from breast milk and so they would need the additional formula in order to grow as they should. Another controversy is that it applies only to women who want to breastfeed and do not have contraindications to breastfeeding such as cancer, HIV, other things such as that. And so to answer this peacock question, we looked to the available literature and selected ones that were eligible and appropriate for our use. And so for the first study, we found it was called the effect of mother-infant skin-to-skin contact immediately after birth on exclusive breastfeeding, a systematic review and meta-analysis. So this level of evidence is high because it is a systematic review and meta-analysis. What happened was the two authors selected 12 eligible randomized clinical trials for qualitative review, and of those 12, eight were also selected for quantitative analysis. And because the heterogeneity was P less than 0 0.303, it made evidence synthesis appropriate. And I had mentioned that there was two authors, but in case the two authors had issues with selecting the randomized clinical trial study, they would bring in a third researcher to kind of help mitigate any conflict. What they found was that skin-to-skin -skin contact increased exclusive breastfeeding rate, indicative of achieved nutrition needs of the infant. As for the second study, its title is Giving Birth, a Systematic Review of the Value of Skin-to-Skin -skin Contact in a Medicalized Birth. So the level of evidence for this article was high because it is a systematic review of 31 eligible articles exploring variables of skin-to-skin -skin contact, breastfeeding, weight gain, length gain, head circumference changes. While we were only interested in skin-to-skin -skin contact and breastfeeding has the variables, it was also really interesting to learn about the other variables as well. This study found that early skin-to-skin -skin contact is the best intervention to execute immediately after birth. However, providers must acknowledge and address barriers to skin-to-skin -skin contact that may potentially get in the way of skin-to-skin -skin contact and thus its benefits on breastfeeding. These include cesarean sections and analgesia because maybe the mother is too sleepy to engage with the baby and also a lack of patient education about those benefits. The study effect of early skin-to-skin mother-infant contact in the maintenance of exclusive breastfeeding experience in a health department in Spain is an observational retrospective study on 1,071 women and asked about their reasons for cessation of exclusive breastfeeding. The study examined how initiating early skin-to-skin -skin contact could lead to sustained exclusive breastfeeding through as long as three months postpartum. The study found rates of exclusive breastfeeding were highest at discharge and one month postpartum among mothers and newborns that had early skin-to-skin -skin contact. 
The study also looked at causes of breastfeeding discontinuation, and these were associated with appearance of breast-related issues and a return to the workplace. The study ultimately found that immediate or early skin-to-skin -skin contact following birth showed the highest percentage of exclusive breastfeeding at three months postpartum. The study interventions for women who have a cesarean birth to increase uptake and duration of breastfeeding, a systematic review, looked at seven studies containing qualitative and quantitative data, and it explored interventions promoting exclusive breastfeeding in newborns delivered via planned and unplanned cesarean sections. The study reviewed a quality improvement project that implemented early skin-to-skin -skin contact while in the operating room versus later in the post-anesthesia care unit. Exclusive breastfeeding rates increased from under 10% to over 20% following implementation of early skin-to-skin -skin contact in the operating room. The study found that immediate or early skin-to-skin -skin contact can facilitate better initiation and duration of exclusive breastfeeding and it contributed to more positive breastfeeding experiences for the mother and facilitated function. The effects of kangaroo mother care on the time to breastfeeding initiation among preterm and low birth weight infants is a meta-analysis that compares kangaroo mother care, which includes skin-to-skin -skin contact versus conventional care, where the baby is dried and put in a radiant warmer slash incubator and looks at their impact on breastfeeding. It analyzed eight randomized controlled trial studies comprising of 1,900 participants, where seven out of the eight studies concluded that kangaroo mother care improved breastfeeding rates in preterm and low birth weight infants. The overall pool mean time was collected among the studies, and it showed that the KMC, or the kangaroo mother care group, initiated breastfeeding two days and 14 hours earlier than the conventional care group. This study supports the statement that Skin-to-skin -skin contact improves not only breastfeeding rates, but emotional regulation in infants. Furthermore, the study concludes kangaroo mother care promotes early initiation of breastfeeding. The next study I'm going to be talking about is a quasi-experimental study titled The Effect of Mother and Newborn Early Skin-to-Skin -skin Contact on Initiation of Breastfeeding, Newborn Temperature, and Duration of Third Stage of Labor. This study was conducted in Iraq and the sample consisted of 108 women. They were separated into a skin-to-skin -skin contact group and a routine care group. In the skin-to-skin -skin contact group, skin-to-skin -skin contact was started immediately after birth and continued for an hour, while in the routine care group, infants were placed under a warmer, dried, and handed to the mother for breastfeeding. Findings indicated that skin-to-skin -skin contact led to earlier initiation of breastfeeding, decreased the incidence of hypothermia, and there was a shorter duration on the third stage of labor. This article is a level one level of evidence. It is a randomized clinical trial. Uh, this article focused on the newborn's alert state in those first hours of life and how skin-to-skin -skin contact can influence breastfeeding depending when it is initiated. So there were two groups. Uh, they both received skin-to-skin -skin contact. So for both of these groups, one was provided skin-to-skin -skin contact immediately, which was at the first minute of life after they were born, and the other group received skin-to-skin -skin contact early, which was at exactly the first hour of life. Afterwards, they conducted a follow-up six months later in which the mothers provided feedback as to how long the babies were breastfed and if it was exclusive or if they used any supplementation. So the findings here were that despite the onset of the skin-to-skin -skin contact and when it was implemented, the babies were exclusively breastfed up till five months of age, roughly. Uh, it does indicate that there is a positive effect in early skin-to-skin -skin contact despite the onset of the timing, but there was no other group to compare that did not receive the skin contact. So it is lacking a little on terms of comparing, but it does still support that skin-to-skin -skin contact is beneficial for exclusive breastfeeding. This article is a level three level of evidence. It is a descriptive qualitative design. So this research paper was organized around the nine developmental stages of a newborn and what they go through in those first few hours and how skin-to-skin 
contact impacts uh, how they transition through those stages. The paper is essentially an analysis of extensive research that was done on behaviors of full-term infants during skin-to-skin -skin contact, as well as clinical observations from various different settings from the nurse clinician's perspective while they implemented skin-to-skin -skin contact with different couplets, which is a mother and her baby. So the findings were skin-to-skin -skin contact in these few hours after birth provides vital advantages for the newborn in order to experience a, specific, a successful transition uh, to life outside of the womb. It promotes bonding between mom and baby and it increases the mother's self-efficacy for breastfeeding. It promotes primal sucking, it establishes earlier breastfeeding, and it also will establish exclusive breastfeeding in most babies, which will decrease formula supplementation. Collective findings from our research suggest that there are multiple benefits to skin-to-skin -skin contact and kangaroo mother care for mom and for baby. So it can promote a better bonding between baby and their parents, especially mom or dad, whoever's doing the skin-to-skin -skin contact. It can help with a better latch to the breast, which helps with early successful and exclusive breastfeeding. It can also soothe baby in their transition from external womb life, and it can also help to decrease the risk of hypothermia. For moms specifically, it can help in shortening the duration of the third stage of labor. Some barriers to skin-to-skin -skin contact consist of C-sections or analgesia, as well as the lack of patient education in regards to the benefits that come with skin-to-skin -skin contact. So, some studies also show that uh, early skin-to-skin -skin contact was more common in vaginal or natural births in comparison to C-sections. So vaginal births had a 92% of incorporation of the early skin-to-skin -skin contact, while C-sections that were planned had an 81% and urgent C-sections had a 57%. Moms reported that they have more positive breastfeeding experiences when they receive that skin-to-skin -skin contact following a C-section. So even though we're seeing the unequal distribution of who gets early skin-to-skin -skin contacts in between vaginal and C-section birth, it has been proven by research that both of them would benefit more if they still are able to receive that skin-to-skin -skin contact. As for the difference of early versus immediate skin-to-skin -skin contact, the onset doesn't make much of a difference according to studies. Um, whether they receive it at the first minute or at the first hour of life, exclusive breastfeeding has been shown to be maintained approximately up until five months of age. Exclusive breastfeeding is also highest at discharge, but it does start to decrease at one month postpartum. And the common reason for breastfeeding cessation is actually hypogalactinemia, which is a uh, low secretion of milk. There is strong evidence that indicates the positive effects of skin-to-skin -skin contact. Multiple studies containing the highest level of evidence, which is a level 1, concluded skin-to-skin -skin contact causing an earlier initiation of breastfeeding. The evidence could be considered high quality as there were studies that discussed different populations. We gathered studies that consisted of infants born via cesarean section, infants born vaginally, full-term infants, and preterm infants. The positive effects of skin-to-skin -skin contact on breastfeeding is evident in all of these populations. In addition, there is consistency between the studies that were researched, with all of them showing earlier initiation of breastfeeding and a positive breastfeeding experience. Some studies even included other benefits of skin-to-skin -skin contact, such as improving thermoregulation and bonding between mother and infant. The main limitation between the studies would have to be the risk of bias, that can be overlooked with the established guidelines and policies we are about to mention. Applicable practice guidelines consist that on maternity units, it is required to provide immediate skin-to-skin -skin contact after birth and to allow the couplet to remain uninterrupted for the first hour of life, or at the very least until their first feed has been done. Mothers can perform skin-to-skin -skin contact as long as they wish and as long as both her and baby are stable and being safe. A mother should be encouraged to offer that first feed whenever baby is showing signs of readiness. And couplets who are unable to have skin-to-skin -skin contact immediately after birth are encouraged to start as soon as both of them are stable. On neonatal units, it is required that parents be informed and encouraged about the importance of skin-to-skin -skin contact. It can provide 
comfort and emotional support for baby's health and development. Mother should be allowed to perform skin-to-skin -skin contact if the neonatal is a neonate is stable enough to handle it. And this promotes breastfeeding, it encourages instinctive feeding behavior, as well as increasing the amount of milk that is expressed. Some safety considerations while performing skin-to-skin -skin contact consist of making sure that baby's airway is being maintained. Their nose, mouth, and face should always remain uncovered. Their back should be covered with a blanket. And the nurse should be frequently assessing mom for any changes in level of consciousness as well as their vitals. And for baby, they'd be checking the respiratory rate, their chest movements, and unusual breath sounds. If mom ever becomes unstable or sleepy, baby should be returned to their bassinet to ensure their own safety. There are other policies like rooming in. So this is something we should be encouraging uh, for mom to keep her baby in the room with her. This helps her to promote bonding with her infant, uh, early breastfeeding, and it also just helps her to get used to having baby there um, since when she goes home, the baby will be there. However, if mom is really tired or unstable, we could take baby to the nursery for a little while just to allow her to sleep. But we really do want to keep the baby in the same room for the most part. As for breastfeeding and lactation, mom should be encouraged to breastfeed frequently and early. The nurse should be trained on education and tips for helping mom with breastfeeding and getting a good latch. But if there are further issues and they need more help, a referral for a lactation consultant may be needed. We looked at Mama Brenda UCLA's skin to skin care policy. And the purpose of this policy was to facilitate and encourage skin to skin and other baby friendly activities for all newborns and their parents. The goal of this policy is to improve parent baby attachment, facilitate breast milk production and breastfeeding, and to decrease the baby's stress by providing opportunities for skin to skin contact. The policy recommends placing the baby skin to skin with the parent immediately following delivery if the baby is medically stable. Um, any and all assessments needed to be done on the baby can be done with the baby on the mother or the parent's chest. Uninterrupted skin to skin is continued until the baby finishes its first feed or for a minimum of one hour if the baby is not breastfeeding. Recommendations for facilitation and promotion of skin to skin contact include providing teaching sessions for parents Providing education to parents about the advantages of skin-to-skin -skin contact for both mother and baby can help the parents become willing to implement skin-to-skin. -skin. The teaching sessions can be held prior to delivery of the baby and continued education can be given following birth of the baby and throughout the hospital stay to promote increased skin-to-skin -skin contact. Providing education for the nurses on the unit as well as reviewing policies can help further facilitate skin-to-skin -skin contact implementation, policies, standardized care practices, and these policies should be reviewed during training for new nurses and annually, as well as um, updated to meet current practices. Educating nurses about the benefits of skin-to-skin -skin contact and early breastfeeding can help them initiate and encourage parental participation. Um, there is hesitancy regarding skin-to-skin -skin contact in terms of whether or not it is safe for the mother and baby following delivery. Mothers are usually fatigued and tired, and they may not be able to hold their babies appropriately with a dedicated bystander, such as a, the parent's support person. Um, the bystander can monitor the skin-to-skin -skin contact to ensure safety of the baby. Breastfeeding provides many maternal and neonatal health benefits. It is important to initiate breastfeeding within the first days of life in newborns to improve postpartum care and minimize potential health risk. Skin-to-skin -skin contact is a non-invasive and non-pharmacological intervention that can be implemented to facilitate breastfeeding. We formulated our PCOG question, in newborn babies, what is the effect of skin-to-skin -skin contact compared with no skin-to-skin -skin contact 
on breastfeeding for the first four weeks of life. High-level research studies were gathered to answer the question, including three systematic reviews, one meta-analysis, one randomized clinical trial, one quasi-experimental study, one descriptive qualitative design study, and one retrospective cohort study. In addition, clinical practice guidelines and protocols from the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, or UNICEF, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, were also used in their research process, discussing the effectiveness of skin-to-skin -skin contact. Furthermore, Ronald Reagan UCLA's policy highlights the importance of skin-to-skin -skin contact in promoting breastfeeding, attachment, and thermal regulation immediately following delivery. To encourage skin-to-skin -skin contact, we provided several recommendations involving teaching sessions for parents, education and policy review for nurses, and having a dedicated bystander. According to the studies, clinical practice guidelines, and UCLA's policy, skin-to-skin -skin contact is an effective intervention in promoting early breastfeeding within the first four weeks of life. And that concludes our presentation.